It's easy to chase numbers. It's even easier to forget what they mean. The Toyota Tundra offers one powertrain in three different flavors. At the base of them all is a 3.4 liter twin turbocharged V6. Under the hood of most, you'll find it 389 horsepower, 479 pound-feet of torque, but the iForce Max will add another 100 and... No, see, now I'm doing it. We really need to talk about what that torque means. The more torque you have at a given RPM means the more power you will have at that RPM. And ultimately, it's the power that determines the total amount of work that the engine can do. If you're towing or you want to pass without caressing the red line, you want more low range torque because that means the engine doesn't need to spin as fast to make more power. Therefore, there's less noise and less friction, which makes for more refinement and better gas mileage. All of that is why the regular Tundra's power plant is an exceptional unit for a truck's purpose. And it's roughly $3,700 less than the hybrid. Briefly, I'd like to recommend the friendly people over at Royal South Toyota in Bloomington, Indiana for letting me test drive the non-hybrid Tundra for today's video. The staff are knowledgeable, Royal is dedicated to the community, and they currently have Tundras below MSRP. Check them out. I'm not going to spend much time on configurations, but the iForce Max system is the exclusive power plant to the TRD Pro and range-topping capstone, which can cost over $80,000. Since you can't get it on the lower half of the lineup, this is available with only the 6.5 or 5.5 foot bed and the Crew Max cab. On the outside, there's not a whole lot of things differentiating the two. You have the little blue inlay, these little tacked on vents. It also add roughly 400 pounds to the curb weight, and when compared to similar specs, the towing and payload capacity remain roughly the same. I just made a full Tundra review, so you can check that out for all of the interior details, but the only difference between the iForce and iForce Max on the inside is that there is no storage underneath the rear seats because of the battery here in the Max. So why would you buy the hybrid? Well, reason would tell us that it's efficiency, but that's not really the case here. From my experience, it's pretty hard to hit the EPA ratings, and according to the government, there is just a two mile per gallon difference between the two. Toyota said the hybrid is for pulling performance. But here with the regular truck, you technically have the same ratings. In fact, the SR5 grade that I'm driving right now can tow up to 12,000 pounds, which is the peak in the lineup. This is in part thanks to 479 pound-feet of torque, a 10-speed automatic with great gearing and a transmission cooler on top of that. While that's all impressive, the regular truck is down 48 horsepower and 104 pound-feet of torque when compared to the hybrid. This additional peak power should help when getting a heavy trailer up to speed. But the key word in all of that is peak. If the truck is not using its hybrid max system, you're not gaining anything from it, and it's been interesting to watch the meter of the hybrid max over the last week. Because see, driving the regular truck, it never feels short of torque, even pulling up this long hill. Because of the well-tuned 10-speed automatic transmission, this thing is pretty good at getting to its power band quickly, and the twin turbos here spool up with minimal latency. A couple of years ago, I got a 0 to 60 in 6.3 seconds with the Tundra, but really that number is kind of meaningless here, especially considering it's pretty easy to just spin the wheels. So I want to try something different and do a 20 to 50 mile per hour pull and compare the two. Rolling onto the throttle there, I was able to get from 20 to 50 in under three and a half seconds. Now let's see what the numbers have to say about the hybrid. So the difference is 0.2 seconds. My gut tells me that they are identical in thrust with the hybrid having an advantage in initial response. The motor assists as the engine gets to the meat of its power band, but if you're chasing speed, are you sure you want a Tundra? 
you're probably more interested in things like how many large profane bumper stickers you can fit on the rear window, or perhaps towing. Well, TFL has already done a great test of the iForce Max that I will link below. The hybrid will kick in during acceleration, but while you're cruising, it very much still relies on boost. The hybrid hardly helped at all. And that's not to say that the results were bad. It's a good truck for towing, but the engine needs to charge the battery. So if it begins to use it while you're towing, eventually it depletes it. So it's only going to assist in very short bursts. It can operate as fully electric when under an extremely light load to increase gas mileage. Otherwise, it's just 400 pounds of extra weight. It's there to help you get up to speed with a little more ease, especially if you're pulling, you know, the 11,000 pounds that the thing is rated to do. And even when I'm driving like normal, I can see that the Hybrid Max helps it respond and continues to help when I'm under full throttle. But in regular driving and towing, that 583 pound-feet number doesn't matter as much as you would think. In other words, this is a good powertrain, but in no world will it replace a diesel despite the numbers making it look like it could. So if it's not replacing a power stroke anytime soon, what is the purpose of the Hybrid Max? It will get a little bit better gas mileage in the city. It also gives this a sharper initial response. I think that's all Toyota wanted it to do. My beef with this system is that it costs an extra $3,500. And this really isn't as involved as Toyota's regular hybrids because this just has a single motor sandwiched in between a pre-existing engine and transmission. Like some of the other hybrids from the brand, there is a slight acceleration advantage. But in most other Toyotas, it's under two grand to upgrade and you should definitely make your money back with fuel savings. So my conclusion here is just get the regular model. I mean, unless you really, really want the sharper response. For towing, it will only help you get up to speed with a bit more eagerness. For longevity, it hardly takes a load off of the turbos, and after 12 or 15 years, replacing the battery is a possibility. For unloaded acceleration, the difference is insignificant, and there's zero financial advantage either. I love Toyota, and I like the new Tundra. It has a well-tuned power Train, a standard, practical composite bed with a multitude of helpful options available if you want them, along with some neat off-road packages. But after driving the electrified variant, I'm disappointed that they spent development, money, and time on this hybrid and not on improving the middling ride quality or stepping up the materials on the luxury trims that account for much of the new truck's lineup. I've said it many times, the Tundra makes its best argument as a work grade or mid-tier truck. But am I being too negative? I suppose a hybrid Tundra had to start somewhere. As far as a first try goes, it's smooth, it's responsive, and if you absolutely need the max from your Tundra, and money isn't an object to you, here you go. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then leave a thumbs up and help me sneak into the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe and hit the notification bell for more fun, detailed car content without fluff. Consider becoming a channel member for an additional podcast and to help me take this to the next level. I'll catch you in the next one.